Hey, Justin Dyson here, Dyson Apiaries. Uh, going to talk a little bit about pollen supplement, uh, supplemental feeding. Um, we're in the, in the latter part of January here in North Carolina. Um, just kind of talk about the whys and you know what your goals are and that kind of thing and kind of show you how to get that feeding accomplished. Stick right with us. So pollen substitute uh, is what I have here. This is a uh, Man Lake Ultra B product. Uh, I like it pretty well um, or pretty good. Uh, you got to kind of determine what you want to do in the spring when you start thinking about pollen substitutes or supplemental feeding. Uh, if your goal is to build up really strong bees early in the year, maybe you're wanting to make a bunch of divides or uh, nukes or, or something of that nature, or maybe you're trying to fulfill a early pollination contract or something like that, you may have to consider doing some supplemental feeding because bees, bees not only determine <clears throat> when they start brooding up based on the, the daylight hours, which that's one of the primary contributors, uh, they also determine that based on the intake of feed. So if they are bringing in nectar sources and they're bringing in pollen sources, that signals that hive to, to start raising brood because they know spring is coming. Uh, it sounds like my cows will join in the video. But <clears throat> so it's really important to, to to be aware of what pollen will do to, the, to these colonies when we put that on here. These bees are going to immediately start consuming this pollen substitute and when that happens of course they're going to start raising brood. And when they raise brood, yes brood takes the protein to raise that brood but it also takes carbohydrates twofold. One they have to feed with that carbohydrate mixed with some protein to make that uh, larva jelly. Um, but in addition they have to heat the hive um, to a, a higher temperature in a bigger area so when they start you know if they maybe right now these colonies here in late january may have a, a little a little brood cluster the size of a baseball or softball um, if we start supplemental feeding them they may grow that into a basketball early here in january where we're still we're still experiencing some some moderately cold temperatures i mean we're uh, we're just getting started with our really cold temperatures uh, it seems like every year in February we have some teen uh, weathers down in teens. So, um, so they're going to have to keep a bigger area warm, and that requires more energy, more carbohydrates, more nectar, right, or more sugar. So, <clears throat> when we when we start this process of feeding, I'll quote my dad Terry Dyson on this. He said, "If you're going to start feeding pollen early in the year, you have to be willing to finish the job." Um, and, and what he means by that is, if we start brooding these boxes up. Um, they're going to need access to carbohydrates that they may not have an ample supply of. I mean, these, these hives were set up for winter, you know, with a good amount of honey, say, you know, 45 pounds of, of uh, honey or, or, you know, sugar water made into quote unquote honey. Um, but when we start, when we start ramping them up, say in January, that's earlier than there are any nectar sources available for them. And they're going to, there, it's going to be like mid-February probably before we have some uh, red maples blooming and things like that. And even then, those nectar sources are kind of unreliable. It's a great nectar source. The problem is here that a lot of times it's too windy or it's um, or it's too cold or, or it's raining or whatever in February and first part of March and they're not able to go out and forage those nectar sources. So. So even though there's something available out there, they may not get it. So we need to finish the job, and that means that we may we may have to um, we may have to do, or we probably will have to do some supplemental feeding um, with some light sugar mixture and continue that process of allowing them to raise brood. <clears throat> one of the one of the other reasons. So I started off talking about reasons that we would feed pollen. Mm -hmm. And of course, one of the big reasons is we want to early build up. We're trying to get them up to snuff and that kind of things. But sometimes, uh, you know, the bees as they as they age, um, the the bees, you know, they live like five six months for those wintertime bees, and that's a long time. Well, well, those bees have to survive all winter, 
and then after that they have to raise brood so if they have enough pollen in their hive that's great but a lot of times in our area um, due to varying factors you know different agricultural practices and climate situations and whatever um, a lot of times that pollen source is a little bit unreliable in the fall for them to put that pollen away and they may run out in late winter when they're trying to raise that brood for spring buildup but when that happens those bees start sacrificing their own protein sources within their body in order to raise brood well that only shortens that lifespan so we get at kind of that teeter-totter level where it's like if they give up too much and they shorten that lifespan too much then they're not able to complete the brood rearing cycle and and have enough young bees to sustain the hive so that's another reason for using pollen substitutes in this period of time especially if we see when we're doing our fall inspections we're looking through those hives and we're seeing that they don't have you know good full frames of pollen in the hive i mean it, it takes a lot of pollen to raise all these bees to get ready for spring so we can consider that as part of the supplement process so um, again kind of depends on what you're wanting to accomplish but you may have to feed just simply to, to keep them surviving and keep those bees alive long enough to get a good brood cycle reared um so i'm gonna i'm gonna jump in this hive i'm gonna kind of show you how we do this process one thing that's really important to really important to recognize is these pollen patties as they come i'm gonna pull one out here are really large um as you see here this pollen patty is you know longer than my hand it's uh you know eight ten inches long uh five inches or so wide and when we feed these these are like a magnet for high beetle larva so when we feed these we need to be aware of the size of the colony the size of the colony cluster what they can cover and what they can consume in a reasonable amount of time and typically this time of year i'm going to cut these at least in half um, i think that's a good size and now if we're down into a if we're down into a smaller cluster we may we may only give them a small strip um, so keep that in mind as we're doing these feedings and we're going to go ahead and jump in here i'm going to show you how we apply these i got me a new smoker hey i like that it's about 50 degrees right now um we're gonna have to be uh good and quick but it's a good day to do this we don't get many of these days in january I'm gonna kind of work I'm gonna work this hive backwards so you can see what I'm doing here I normally work from the back and these bees are not happy I'm putting my veil on like I should have to start with we have a nice little winter cluster here up a smoke here before they get carried away so this is a it's kind of a medium-sized cluster it's not exceptional um, but it's also it's good and sustainable I, li I like to see this I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I think these I think this colony can probably handle about a half and uh, We'll go ahead and get that on there. So just cut that pollen patty in half there. Um, you don't have to remove the full. There's actually there's actually little holes in that bottom piece there. Top one's solid, but the bottom one has little holes and the bees kind of go up in there and work and they'll eventually drag this out of the hive. But we're gonna, we're gonna kind of make sure we don't mash a whole pile of bees there, but put that right in the middle of that cluster. And I'm taking way too much time here kind of talking about it, but um, with it being as cold as it is, but I'm going to put that right in the middle of that cluster. And I'm going to go ahead and close those bees right back up. There are a lot of bees up here in the top. Um, but we want to make sure that, that pollen patty is, is right in the middle of that cluster so they can easily get to it and they will consume it quickly. Um, if it's a single story hive, we may put that right up on top and a double deck hive 
especially if the bees are split between both boxes, we will uh, we'll put that right in the middle of that cluster. This hive's kind of over to one side. I'm gonna come around and work from the front. Personally, don't feel like that colony can handle even a half strip. I'm just going to give them a quarter. We'll come back around at a later date and uh, hit them again. But that'll be plenty enough for them to handle for now. Not all colonies are created equal. these clothes back up quickly so they can warm up we're in the late evening here so colony of bees here Really important key points to remember when pollen feeding is know what our strategies are, what is our purpose. Um, are we trying to do early spring buildup? Are we trying to make sure the colony survives long enough because they're running out of pollen? Um, are we trying to do a lot of divides early in the spring? What are, what are we trying to accomplish? And then with that, make sure that we finish the job. So meaning that make sure they don't run out of honey because they're raising too much brood. Um, before there are nectar sources available. So keep those things in mind when we're doing pollen feeding. Lastly, make sure we don't give them too much that they can't cover and keep the hive beetles under control because they will, in that cluster, start taking um, taking hold even during the winter. Um, I, I've seen some issues with that and it especially becomes more prevalent as we, as we ramp into spring and we're doing any supplemental feeding. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, how we do supplemental pollen, sub, uh, you know, supplemental pollen feeding, and why we do that. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, um, share this video, comment below if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out. I'll do my best to answer anything that uh, that you got to throw at me. Thanks again.